Okay, so I got to replace this under warranty. Brand new unit. This controller went in for low ambient conditions. It's supposed to control the fan speed of the condenser fan in low ambient. It's supposed to lower the speed in the low ambient to keep head pressure up. Now, what was happening was the condenser fan was running full bore. It caused the unit to freeze up as the ambient temperature dropped. So we're going to change this and see if we can get this thing working properly. The existing controller, the one that failed. I went through this. It's wired correctly. I even called tech support just to cover my basis. And we even checked the thermistor to make sure it was reading correctly at the temperature. It currently was the day um, I found the issue. And the resistance of the thermistor was dead on for that temperature. So it seemed everything was good, wired right, the thermistor was good. So it seems like we might have a logic issue in this controller. So let's get it changed out and see what happens. Now for the probe, it says to place the probe on a U-bend or between the fins of the upper third part of the condenser. Now this is a microchannel coil, so it doesn't have a U-bend. So I'm going to try in the upper one third of the condenser to see if it works there. So what I like to do when I'm changing out a part is I just like to, if, if there's enough slack on the wires, I like to just remove the part like this from the panel, put the new one in, and then that way I know where the wires go. I can go wire for wire back to the new one because I've already verified this is wired correctly. So that is a tip that I would recommend to you guys if you can do it, if you have enough wire slack. Okay, so here is where I'm going to try the probe out. This is the top one third of the coil and it's put through the fins as per the instructions because I don't have a bend to put it on because like I said, this is a micro channel. So let's try it there and see what happens. Okay, so it's installed and on a prelim check here, it's running. The fan's not going very fast. It's actually going very slow and there's some heat rising out of the top of this thing. That's sort of what we want to see. But what I need to find out is if this fan motor here is sleeve bearing or ball bearing because it matters dependent on the settings in there you can see that there's a ball bearing and a sleeve bearing setting the other thing I want to do is I want to hook up my gauges to see what kind of pressures we're getting because if we don't check that and we are dropping below a certain pressure on the on the suction side guess what we can start freezing up like what originally happened to this unit so these are the two things I still got to check but right now everything's looking like it's working okay just from the outside looking in. All right, so looking at this motor here it doesn't indicate whether it's a sleeve bearing or a ball bearing but what I did was I called York Tech Support and they dug through the info and they let me know that it is actually a ball bearing style motor so we are gonna set this up or probably just leave it in the position that it is because it's set for minimum position ball bearing. And now I'm gonna stick my gauges on and we're gonna check the pressures to make sure that the pressures stay within line of what they should be without going down into sort of like freezing temps. We don't wanna get really below maybe 35-ish degrees of saturation on the suction line. That's what really I'm gonna be looking for here. All right, some results for you here. Now, the first go around with the sensor where it was, okay, we got down to 17 degrees saturation on the suction side. That's not good. That's going to freeze up the coil. Now, what I did was I took the sensor out and I moved it lower on the condenser. And we are running with a little bit higher saturation temp on the suction side, but not much. This is way below freezing. We're going to freeze that coil up the way things are right now. I'm going to try one more thing and see what happens. Okay, so now what I've done, I've taken the sensor right off the coil and it's just dangling inside of the cabinet. It's just dangling down in there. So it's not actually touching the liquid line, it's not touching the condenser, nothing. And we have settled down and we're maintaining saturation temp of just above 25. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my superheat and subcooling because there also could be a low charge thing going on here because when I feel this liquid line, the liquid line feels warmer than 62 degrees. That's just what my hand's telling me. So I don't know if we have any subcooling there. If we have no subcooling, then we could be undercharged. So the sensor's still in the same position. All right, and running this thing for about 10 minutes now, our superheat is around 25 degrees, and our subcooling is sort of going up and down between one and a half and about two and a half 
There's not enough subcooling in here. So I think we're under charge. We're gonna have to add some gas to this. This is a brand new unit. So potentially there wasn't enough gas added during commissioning. So we're gonna add some gas and see if that makes a difference. Let's get our subcooling up and our superheat down. What I had to do, because the low ambient out here and the tank pressure was low, is I had to go warm this tank up while I ate lunch. So you can check that out right now as to what I did you don't use often but this is going to come in very handy today wrap around heater for a tank now i got to charge up a system that's low on charge but my 410a tank's been in my truck it's cold outside the pressure's low i don't have enough pressure to get in the system i'm going to put this on go for lunch when i come back it's going to be all good while we go for lunch i've got this heater on here it's self-regulated okay so dunking this in a tank of water you'd have to monitor the pressure because you don't want to overpressurize the tank and cause an issue. This is a self-regulated heater. It's going to warm up this tank. It's at about 50 PSI right now. Um, so when we get back after lunch, we should have warmed this up to above the pressure of the system running currently, and we should be able to get gas out of this into the system. Warm here. Let's open up this valve and watch this pressure climb. See that there? I just opened it for a quick second, but that is the pressure we've now got this too. We went from about 50 PSI to over 200 just by heating up the tank. Point, I've added, um, I would say probably just under a pound of gas and we've been moving around a little bit. We're getting up to about five degrees of subcooling. So because this is 410A and it's a 400 series refrigerant, I've been adding it as a liquid um, very, very slowly. But because I'm adding it as a liquid, look what happens to my superheat it drops right off even if you add it in very short spurts so we really have to wait until that liquid boils out of that compressor and we start seeing some superheat before i want to add some more in but our subcooling is coming up our superheat should start rising back up very very soon thing as well hvac six cents kicking in is we actually have some heat coming off of this now where before there was really no heat at all coming off of this down and check this evaporator out just to make sure i had no icing or anything like that and I do not have any icing whatsoever look right down at the valve where the liquid line enters we have no icing there at all and we do have a nice sweat happening on the evap sorry guys on the roof cold outside I was filming my battery died it just drained right out but I'll tell you what happened so I put a little bit of gas in that system and after I did that my, my subcooling went up, my superheat came down. Now, because it's a fan speed controller, the fan was speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down, and what I seen was this. So as the fan sped up, because the air's cold moving across that condenser coil, my subcooling went up, my superheat went down. As the fan slowed down, my subcooling dropped, and my superheat went back up and the pressures were also doing this. So what I had to do was sort of find um, a midpoint between the high and the low of the pressures, superheat and subcooling, and find where I was sort of comfortable. And if I looked at the high and the low, that midpoint was probably around six degrees of superheat and around 12 degrees of subcooling. Went down to the coil after about an hour and a half. There was no freezing going on, no nothing. It was actually had a nice sweat on the coil and it was bringing down the space temp and everything seemed to be fine. The amp draws were all good. So when you're setting something up like this in low ambient conditions, it's sometimes it's difficult and sometimes you really got to look at, at these, these levels, temperatures, pressures doing this, and you got to really find that midpoint where you want it because it can, it can trip people up seeing it al almost drop to like no superheat or the subcooling going up to like 35 degrees because the air is so cold moving across that coil. But then that subcooling comes back down to like seven. Okay, and then it does this. So you gotta really find a midpoint. Anyway guys, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'm out, happy HVACing.